Can you hear me? I don't even have to project from my diaphragm. Okay, so you're here. Uh, just trigger warning. This is an adult, uh, an adults only. Uh, a panel. We, we'll be showing some graphic imagery and talking some gra about some graphic stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> you can be really immature, but just not, you know, like be a, 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 be a, a, an adult, but you can be plenty immature if that's, if that's your, your jam. Um, but I figure actually first, why don't we, as the other panelists start coming in, uh, we should introduce ourselves because we've got two fabulous people here who can, who can, we can start a conversation with. Um, uh, so my name is Justin Hall. I'm the chair of the MFA in Comics program uh, at, at California College of the Arts. Uh, I'm a ca cartoonist as well. I did a dirty book called uh, Hard to Swallow with Dave Davenport. And, um, uh, and then I'm one of the co-organizers co of Pride and Panels. Um, so thank you very much for being here, as I said. And let me turn it over to Mari. You can introduce yourself as well. Hi, can you hear me through this mask? Okay. Um, my name is Mari Naomi. I don't know why I'm here because I'm a fucking prude. So <laughs> um, I'm. We'll we'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been making comics since the '90s. I am the founder and admin of the Cartoonists of Color, the Queer Cartoonists, and the Disabled Cartoonists databases. I um, have eight eight books published. I think um, most of them auto bio. Uh, a few young adults, one of them got banned in Texas. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's about it. <laughs> and your stuff is bisexual stuff. Um, but... Yeah, I, I'm they, them, non-binary, bisexual, non-bi, but bi. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just saying the because we're going to talk about erotic stuff. It's good to know. I'm a prude. I've never had sex. <laughs> we're <in> always. <laughs> no, just I, kidding. I, your, your autobio stories did not sound like they came from a prudish space, but okay, <laughs> all right. We'll, we'll, we'll dig in. Well, my first book was about my sex life as a child and teenager, um, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Trinidad is next, actually. Hello. Hello. I'm sorry I'm late. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hi, Mari. <laughs> Hello. How are you? <laughs> we're just introducing ourselves, so yeah. Yeah. Oh, I am Trinidad Escobar. I am the cartoonist of Arrive in My Hands, a collection of queer lesbian erotic poems. Um, and I also make just queer comics smut um, online for free. And then, <laughs> and I also do YA children's books. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, John Macy and I have done a lot of graphic novels that have a lot of sex in them. And um, so, no surprise that I'm on this panel. <laughs> um, I started out in uh, like gay comics and then Meat Men. Does any who remembers Meat Men? Meat Men, yes. Oh, yeah. see, uh, I used to be afraid to buy those. Oh yeah. I had to read them in the store because I was too afraid to purchase them. Because it would mean you were a perverted homosexual. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, lot, <laughs> lots of books and uh, and happy to be here. And this has been a great show. I'm really enjoying it. Thank you, Justin. Yeah, thank you. John, I remember you actually, now, that you, I don't know, that clicked something in my head, because you wrote a Goodreads review about my first book saying that you were reading it on the subway and you got really embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, there was some, I think there was some nudity on the back cover or something. No. <laughs> well, the book that I was reading on the Bart had, I didn't read, the, the cover was fairly tasteful, but the back cover had like full, like, guy's ass sticking out and <laughs> everyone is like smiling and looking at me and I'm just like <laughs> until I finally looked at it. <laughs> Comics is advertisement. Yeah. <laughs> um, we, we have one of uh, Mari's dirty produce uh, illustrations oh. up behind <laughs> us here. So yeah, so Mari does bring the dirty, uh, dirty <laughs> thoughts and, and images. Um, uh, I wanted to start with a um, sort of. I'm curious about uh, the political nature of erotica in comics. Um, uh, one of the things I do as a as a teacher is uh, every, once a semester I come in and slam down a big pile of erotic comics on the table and I tell my students, "You should all make pornography," um, <laughs> um, because sex, sexuality, and desire is one of the great 
mysteries and profundities of the human experience, and we should be making great art about it, right? And the problem is not erotica or pornography, it's about, it's bad pornography. And especially if you're a woman, a person of color, a queer person, you shouldn't let other people colonize your sexual space, right? You should be making your own erotic work and doing that authentically, and people will love you for it, and you can make the world a better place. That's my pitch. <laughs> And, and my students sort of, you know, their jaws hit the floor a little bit, but um, I, I, I really do believe that. So I'm curious, uh, the panelists here, do you think of making graphic content, and, and you're all coming at this from different angles. Like, I mean, Mari, I don't think you think of your work as erotica necessarily, but you have, uh, you have erotic con or graphic content in your work. Um, uh, and then obviously the two of you have also made um, uh, pure erotica. Um, so do you think of this content as having political dimensions? I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just you're, you're making a statement and you're outing yourself. And um, I don't think it, doing pornography for, as a student, I think is a fantastic idea because you will, it'll make you fearless. You know, after revealing your naughty bits on the, <laughs> you know, publicly, nothing's ever gonna scare you again. So you're, I think it really frees you up as, a, as an author. But politically, it's like, uh, I came from an indie comics, you know, Love and Rockets. That was the kind of my thing. I wasn't doing anything erotic until I had to say, I did it on purpose because I wanted to have the gay relationships very in your face. So like, it, there's no question, this is very gay. And you know, just one peek at it. And those, that was my political, I'm not an activist, so that was my way of doing it show some bravery by doing it that way. I, th I think about Howard Cruz, who the sort of godfather of, of queer comics in a lot of ways. Uh, it, he, when he created the Gay Comics Anthology series, he had a, um, uh, when he called, called out for artists, he asked them that it was time to take risks in service of the truth. And I think that's just such a beautiful way to think about art in a society that doesn't always accept people, right? And you have to have authentic voices. Yeah. Um, uh, to, this is Leah. <laughs> Would you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Um, sure. My name is Leah. I also go by Lee. Um, I've been making comics since high school, but actually publishing, self-publishing for about like six years, roughly. And I recently have been wanting to like get more involved in creating erotic comics because I want to see more sapphic content with plot. <laughs> That's yes. pretty much the general <laughs> version of it. <laughs> So the, the, the question we started with, with was um, how I come into the classroom and slam a big pile of, of yes. porn comics. To, so Wonderful. Leah was my student, and you just you saw this happen. Oh, it was beautiful. <laughs> it was transcending. Ah. <laughs> um, do you think of uh, of and this is the question we're asking about? Um, do you think of of having of doing erotica as having a political uh, element to it? Um. Yes, I think it certainly can just in general. And I think just like a lot of aspects about being queer, like it is inherently political. It might not be the intention necessarily, and that might not be what you are going for when you create your work, but you know, we still live in a very sex negative society, unfortunately. So Fuck like yeah. by put right? So like by putting yourself out there, you are inherent by existing, you are inherently being uh, contributing to the conversation. Yeah. When I was making um, c comics in the very beginning, like in the, the late 90s, I was self-publishing um, these little zines called Estrus. And one of the first comics I made, um, probably actually was, like the second comic I made was about this sort of threesome I found myself in the middle of. Um, and it was like... <laughs> I mean, What's that? <laughs> he prude. Yeah, but it was really just me, you know, trying to hook up with this girl, and then suddenly her boyfriend was there, and I was like, "Oh no." Well, <laughs> that's sad. It was. It was sad. Um, you know, I I got out of there, but uh, <laughs> but uh, so so this was in my little zine thing, and and I'm you know bi and and. And I think the zine or the comics was kind of my way of coming out. Um, actually, the comics were how I inadvertently came out to my parents, um, which I, who I didn't realize would show up at the Alternative Press Expo that day and actually <laughs> look through the zines that I hadn't given them. Um, but anyway, that's a totally different story. 
Um, but so, so I'd made these zines and, and there was someone I was friends with at work. Uh, this was back when I worked in video games. I was working at Sega and this guy, like, you know, I thought we were good enough friends and I showed him the comic and he was so offended and was like, and, and this was something that I got a lot. Um, there was not a lot of bisexual representation at the time. Like very briefly, lesbians were in vogue for like a second on Newsweek. I still have that issue. Um, or time, or I don't know, the, the two, any, anyway, uh, they're in Canadian tuxedos. Uh, so, so yeah, it was really uncomfortable, and he was just like, this is too personal, you really shouldn't show this to people, was what he said. I mean, maybe he meant at work, and maybe he was right, but I don't care, because it made me want to do <laughs> So, I don't know. I don't know if that's political, or if that's just me just hating people telling me what to do. Yes, and. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to add, as an Asian person, when I was growing up, um, I grew up with a lot of imagery that sexualized Asian women mm -hmm. and hypersexualized them. Um, and then when I looked at porn, you would just see like the most popular searches are like Asian women, right? Or like some other variation of a person of color or a black person um, that's fetishized. And I didn't have anything that um, felt good to me. And I got into uh, erotica by finding my mother, my Filipina mother's erotica, like her prose that was hidden in her bathroom, right? And you know, for a Filipina, you're simultaneously hypersexualized by other people and your own people, um, and then you're also a sexual being who would like to express how they are, but cannot because of how the world views them. Um, that pisses me off when you don't have control over that kind of a narrative and I wanted to have some semblance of control and also to give something to another queer person who is like me. I think that's inherently political and Audre Lorde writes about that. The erotic is, is political, um, the personal is political. And so anytime that I do that and I make sure that people know that it's a queer person, it's a Filipina because of her tattoos, or it's a brown person because of their skin color, then I'm making it very clear that um, this is for a particular person's eyes, and it was not meant for like the white cis male gaze who consumes porn, you know, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, this, the interesting idea of like who who produces porn for what audience, right? And we can get more control back about that, right? And the way that uh, we want to with our own authentic, authentic voices. Um, uh, John, your your book, um, a Fearful Hunter, was also a sort of direct political response to uh, Prop Eight. Yeah, Prop Eight had just uh, passed, and I wanted to I wanted to show sex, but I also wanted to show intimacy and make it really humanize like two gay guys because a lot of it a lot of times it the sex is so hardcore that they're not people anymore you know even even the ones we do for ourselves just focus on the sex and i really wanted to show these are really pe people who love each other who deserve they deserve to be able to get married so that was that was definitely but but you know i i am not a stickler about it i i don't care who's writing it i know a lot of um uh, women writers who write gay porn, and they got it. They nailed it. <laughs> so I don't. I just go with it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's also something remarkable I think about um, uh, uh, um, looking at porn that is sort of um, maybe not meant for me, but like I can see. Uh, through the artist's eyes. Like I think about Small Favors, which is this book by Colleen Coover. It's one of my favorite erotica books. And it's uh, about, it's all women. Um, and in a way that I would be less interested in uh, filmic or f photographic images of women having sex, I'm very much drawn to this book because I see, I feel like by by seeing the the stroke of the, of of her ink on the on the page i'm i'm viewing her desire through her eyes um so i think the illustrative quality of comics has this other transcendent effect where where we can sort of bridge into that uh, uh, sexual imagination i've heard a lot of gay women lesbians you might call them who only watched um male porn yes yes is, um but it's really i, I feel like it's really about just the expression and just watching someone be very like thrilled and happy. I mean, and I, and I don't know why um, they didn't watch lesbian porn. Maybe, I mean, it, it is very different from male porn. Um, and also, I mean, it can be, uh, you know, there's all sorts 
out there, but um, also sometimes there's baggage. You don't want to like be watching porn and look. There's someone who looks like your ex, or you know, is your ex in a small community. <laughs> Could be that, I don't know, I didn't ask. <laughs> I mean, I'll also add to that a couple of things. I think a lot of the time you find queer women or queer AFAB people drawn to gay porn because a lot of lesbian porn is not produced by other queer AFAB True. people. True. Like you can tell, not to tell on myself, but you can tell when, you know, a sapphic porn or sapphic erotica is created by a queer person or a, or even just an AFAB person because there's just a different oh, feel to it. Yeah. And like I've had several conversations recently with friends of mine that even written erotica, like when it is written by someone who is heterosexual, like it's not bad, it just has a very different feel to it. A bad than, feel, I, <laughs> is what you're saying. It's not, everyone is allowed to have their tastes, just let kidding. me just, <laughs> I'm not everyone trying to get canceled on this panel, listen, <laughs> but it's just like, like even even content that features a heterosexual couple that is written by queer people has such a different exploration of intimacy and sexuality to it than stuff that is written by like cis hetero people, at, at least in my opinion. I don't think I've ever read any like hetero porn made by gay people. It exists. Oh, yeah. sure, I'm sure. Oh. Yeah. oh, wait, yeah, ew. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, but but I think also maybe the authenticity is something that can draw one. I mean, again, thinking about small favors, like I'm drawn to the authenticity of Colleen's depiction of female sexuality as opposed to a sort of straight man's version of uh, uh, production of female sexuality in, in sort of lesbian porn created by and for straight men. Um, I also think about uh, Yaoi, right, or BL comics, right? So there's, um, and this is, these are manga uh, created by women for primarily fe female audience um, uh, about man-on-man -man sex and romance. Um, and uh, I'm, it's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, it's in the same way that so much lesbian porn is created by, by straight men for straight men. Uh, this is all uh, gay male porn uh, created by women for women. And sometimes I feel seen and sometimes I do not feel seen. Um, so any sort of... The, it, it's not for gay men at all. Yeah. So if it doesn't register with me, it's, it, it wasn't made for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I can still enjoy it. But, but the thing I like about people who do porn comics is you have, they have to draw, you know, just not just the, the ins and outs, but um, <laughs> they have to draw like all the feet and the fingers and the ears. And so you can really get to know them, like where their it is, you know, like <laughs> where it's going. So that's the charming part of it. Like, because if you're just don't, filming it, you're, just, you're picking people who you find attractive, but it's really telling when it's... Um, you know, the extremities. Yeah, the lesser of nature. Uh, Trinidad, do you, I mean, when you draw, like I'm looking at some of your stuff here, like, I mean, when you're drawing, I mean, you're also a poet, so you're sort of picking words are very important here too. Um, but describe your process. I mean, do you think about um, what you're drawing and sort of the extremities and, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh yeah, if you look at my stuff, you can see that I just fudge on feet because I do not pay attention to feet. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I do have to know how to draw human form and, or at least know how to you know, finesse it on the page. Um, but I draw a lot of like monster sex or creature human sex. And so a lot of that is also making up anatomy. Um, and then you can also see what I'm into there. <laughs> but uh, I think that it's... Uh, when you're, I specifically draw dark-skinned Filipinas or dark-skinned mixed Asians that are usually part black <laughs> just because of the communities that I grew up with. Um, and that is what I find beautiful and that what I don't necessarily see on TV in the way that I do it in my neighborhood or with my friends. So I try to like, Oh, it's kind of embarrassing. Some of my friends will see themselves in, um, and not that I'm <laughs> depicting my friends as if I'm imagining them, uh -huh. but I think they're beautiful. And so somehow they'll like make it into something. It's a compliment. <laughs> they should take it as a compliment. But yeah. That's a good question for you, for you. Do you find yourself always drawing like the same vagina? 
Or do you? No, you I'm like variety. The same the vagina, you said. Yeah, different yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah, because um, you know, for genitalia, like everyone's genitalia looks so different. So why perpetuate the same things that you would find in porn, like where everyone has like a, a surgically enhanced, beautiful, shaven, like prepubescent vagina? Like I think that it's important to show variation in, in genitalia too, and that that is beautiful and attractive. I guess I'm, I'm sorry to go on about this, but it's just that I find that a lot of cartoonists, when they get aroused by their own, when they're working in their process, they go to a place in their head where it's, you know, the, the first one you saw or whatever, <laughs> or, or usually it's your own, mm. you know, mm -hmm. and so that's where you learn to draw and then you just stick to it. Mm -hmm. I, and I was doing that, but then I... Um, I got called out because I was drawing the same foreskin. They're like, and whose the, is that? Oh, I got ripped to shreds. I had to go back and <laughs> go and white him out and put new, <laughs> and have a whole look. Like I had to, what's it say about their personality? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I get that. I actually had this uh, situation where I uh, was drawing this uh, hard to swallow comics, and I would um, I kept on drawing the the penis flipped, so so the you know the the head comes like this, and there's the the frenum, you know, kind of comes up like that. I've done that. And I kept on flipping it like this. I've done that. <laughs> That's like when people get the thumb wrong on the hand. Yeah, right, exactly, exactly. It's like I, we're I, AI or something. Yeah, right. Not an I, AI I, penis. I, I was, Jesus. I, was gonna, I think of it as my dyslexia. I mean. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, chuckle, chuckle, haha. Right, right. <laughs> but also this sort of sense of maybe I'm looking down on my own dick all the time, and so I'm only, I'm not seeing the underside of it. So, yeah. Perspective. Perspective issues. <laughs> Um, but this uh, brings up uh, interesting another question I had for you all about sort of the nature of representation in, in erotic erotica and also erotic scenes. Um, like, do you feel like you need? Uh, what are your responsibilities? Um, uh, is your primary responsibility to your own erotic imagination and the stuff that turns you on, and that has that authenticity has to come out, um, or do you feel like you want to need to show different kinds of bodies, different kinds of people, different kinds of ethnicities, different kinds of you know? Um, in order to sort of make the world a better place with erotica? Uh, may I? Um, I feel a little bit of both. Um, there's a part of me that at the end of the day, I want to make whatever I want to make, however that manifests. However, I also don't want to contribute to the problem. I don't want to continue to perpetuate a specific body type or a specific type of queer person, so on and so forth. Like, I want to have a level of mindfulness of, you know what, there's no reason that this character, that we can't have like a bisexual or a pansexual character. Or like, I feel like a lot of my characters are very skinny. Why don't we experiment with that a little bit? So I, I don't wanna be so strong-armed to it that I end up losing my own sense of authenticity as an artist, cause I do wanna do whatever the hell I want. But again, like I said, I don't, I don't wanna contribute to the problem. So if I can add my own little bits of representation while still having my own sense of like, this is my work and nobody can tell me what to do, that's what I'm going to do. All my erotic stuff is, is memoir or, or gags, so I, I go ahead. <laughs> Fair. Um, I, I, I'm not sure if I'm quite answering this correctly, but I just, when you said that, I, I thought about being like a neurodivergent person, being autistic. And um, someone once came up to me and said, I love your erotica comics because they're so cheesy. And I actually liked that. I, for most people, they would say like, oh, I don't like being called cheesy or being called cheesy is something that's like um, frowned upon or cringy. And for me, as an autistic person, I'm very sensitive, I'm emotional. I cry about things when I'm happy and when I'm sad. Um, and then sex can be both sad and erotic. Like all of that can be one. And for someone to say like, oh, I like your stuff because it's actually emotional and people don't talk about that or it's frowned upon for a femme to be very emotional. Um, and I like being seen in that way. Mm -hmm. I think it should be mixed up. Like you should be pushing yourself to to challenge your own medium, and all not even just porn comics, but all comics. Just like really, it's uh, you just take it. Once you think you've gone too far, just one more step. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, I, I think about, you know, uh, uh, Tom of Finland is sort of a giant in the room in terms of gay male uh, uh, comics. Um, and uh, his characters all look the same, right? All, all of his penises look the same. All of the faces look the same. And it, he's a brilliant artist, but like, wow, that's obsessional and interesting. And also sort of disturbing in how same everything, everybody is. Um, <clears throat> so... Yeah, and so the sort of response then would be, okay, do you do you sort of shoehorn, uh, what's, uh, is it shoehorning a diversity or a, 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 of different body types and everything, or is it actually acknowledging and allowing the world to come into your erotic imagination, which is in fact flexible. I love Tom of Finland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's amazing, yeah. He also clearly has a type. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, absolutely. Like that's what that's really about. <laughs> There's a guy who, um, oh, he's a cartoonist, and I don't know his name. It starts with a J. He's Japanese. Jiraiya. Is that who it is um, who made the the massive art? And I have some of his sweaters, and and, and um, clearly has a type. Like oh hell yeah. Um, that is like the most beautiful. Like when I wear that, I feel so romantic. <laughs> like I don't know, it's just like these big sweaty men looking mm. at each other. They're just so beautiful and it's just so sweet like it just it hits my sweet spot it, I don't know <laughs> I think it's okay for people to have what they're good at and do their thing I get bored when I do the same thing over and over again so like that's just not something that I can do artistically because like as soon as I feel like I've gotten something they gotten good at something then I get bored and I need to move on <laughs> but like if you can just like go with something and perfect it and keep being perfect like I don't see a problem with that because someone else could do something else I don't know I think ultimately you shouldn't feel forced to do something because if you're trying to force diversity it is very obvious oh my god I like, just bought a bumper sticker for my car that says um art is like a fart if you have to force it then it's probably shit <laughs> I cannot wait to stick that on my car. This was a nice panel. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sorry. <laughs> right. um, I'm also curious about how uh, the form of comics handles the content of erotica, right? The, the genre um, of erotica. Um, and how, what does it do that's different than filmic production, for example, um, or even single illustrations, right? So. Do you all think about how you engage comics as a medium, like uh, how you pace things, how sort of the, the build of tension and release of tension uh, in the form? And talk about that, some of that. Um, John, by the way, I would just say like your work in particular, uh, sort of looking back at some of these page designs that you, de that you develop, you clearly think a lot about, mm -hmm. about tension and release. The form so, of comics. Yeah. yeah, like I started using fractals because I had an orgasm that was very visual. And I remember as a, as a young boy, Kevin, when I had dry orgasms, the, um, uh, it was more visual. And I, it's almost, well, it's kind of it's like ketamine, actually. So they, maybe that those things are connected somehow. But I was trying to express that the hallucinations of being so turned on or being so in love with somebody that you, just, you can't kiss them hard enough. And you want your faces to merge into one gooey mess, you know, or something, and just be inside their body in every way possible, even ways that are impossible. And just to, to get to that little feeling that I was trying to express. It's so romantic. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I love it. That's it. <laughs> Mic drop. <Sweet. laughs> well, how about the, I mean, Mari, I think you were about to say something too. I think I cut you off when I, um, or was there something about the form of comics that you think about in terms of erotic material? I mean, I, I don't think I've actually um, ever published any of the, the sequential art that I've made that was erotic um, because honestly I was too embarrassed to. Um, because again, I do memoir, <laughs> and some of it's just like, oh no, I cannot go that far. Nobody needs to see that. Um, you do draw it. I have, and and I just let it sat there. I don't, I don't know. I, I again, I, I said I was a prude, and I actually am kind of a prude. Like the times that I've had to draw sexy things, sometimes I'm just like, not looking at the page. I'm just like, I can't. Oh, this is. 
like I, I need it for the story, but this is really embarrassing. <laughs> but like my sexuality is so weird. Like I don't, I feel like I'm not turned on by things that normal people are turned on. Like by I just, it's not, it's more of a feeling like, like, if I remember, like, I don't know, my first kiss with my partner, I mean, like, that's, that's really hot, but, like... You would be surprised. Okay. <laughs> but, like, when I, when I see, like, erotica or porn, like, it never really does anything for me, um, except sometimes go, oh, they look like they like each other. How sweet. Like, that's, that's my response. <laughs> well, you also, like, in this, in this uh, page, for example, you, uh, you, you create the, the image of the two people having sex as a sort of you know, uh, allegorical image of two bodies together. Like, uh, talk about making that decision in terms of cartoon, the cartooning of it. I don't know, she and I are still friends and it's weird to think that we slept together. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't want to draw that. <laughs> she was going to yeah. see it. <laughs> That's what makes it good. Is your, your own uncomfortable it's really body. hot in here. <laughs> That's a mask. Is she here? Right, exactly. <laughs> She's right here. <laughs> Stand up. <laughs> um, by the way, uh, we're gonna, uh, we will have some time for, for Q&A, so please, if you've got some, uh, some questions, keep them in, in the back of your head here as we keep on going. I mean, this is one of the things I love about comics, though. You don't have to, sh and sometimes it's better not to show something because it, it just lets the person ha you know, go with their imagination. With a movie, it's, like, you could still kind of do that with other media, but like, I feel with comics, it's more like you could explicitly, implicitly, just not show something and, and have it just, you, know, you, you get to choose when people use their imaginations. And like, with, when it's something that goes by really quickly, like a movie or video or whatever, like, people might miss it. Whereas, like, you, you're just really like, okay, now you're gonna have to think what's happening in between those two panels. Like, you're, you decide, um, which is, you know, that's a lot of fun control that you could do with one person <laughs> drawing. You also have the power of building anticipation uh, um, in comics. Like, I think about some of the erotic comics that I've read. Like, I'm a huge fan of Smut Peddler with uh, Iron Circus Comics. Highly recommend. Um, and, like, I have blushed harder reading their stuff than like any piece of pornography that I have watched because there is such a level of intimacy and it is so intense but also tender and like the page turn, the power of a page turn is so palpable in erotica, in horror, in, in any genre really within comics but especially with erotica, like building up to that moment of orgasm and really exploring like the build of like that, I, I love that shit. And yeah, yeah. I hope I can be able to do that as I continue to create erotic content. I mean, that is, I mean, that is the thing, like anticipation and stuff. Like I, I'm just thinking about like, what is sexy? Well, to me personally, and like, I don't know, for me, genitals are funny looking. And I mean, just out of context, if you're like, here's a twat, like, ha ha. Like, here's a twat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but, like sometimes it's like, you just like pick up a porn book. You're like, boing. Okay, cool. You like, get a twat and you get a twat and you get a twat. <laughs> it's sweet, but like good for them. I don't know. I don't anyway. Sorry, I don't know where I'm going with this. Uh, I'm warm again. Tr Trinidad, <laughs> Trinidad, you're a poet as well, as I mentioned, and I'm, and poetry also feels to me like the sort of uh the pure text version of this idea of um uh, where you're sort of saying things and, and so much of what you don't say is, is uh, as, as important oftentimes in poetry as what you say. Um, so can you talk about how it, does your background as a poet sort of affect the way that you approach erotic comics and illustration? Mm -hmm. Well, I've, often people ask me if I write and draw um, in, in a particular order, if I do them at the same time, um, to determine what words are used versus what images are used. Mm -hmm. And um, um, I have to explain that everything starts with, everything is poetry. Everything that I do is poetry. So all the erotica or the sex is still poetry to me, even if there's no words. Um, and I go back and forth. So when I'm writing something uh, in words, I, I'm also drawing and then I eliminate things. And so I have like pages and pages of stuff both drawings, um, sketches, and then I um, eliminate like a sculpture, a sculptus would, sculptor would, um, to like later reveal what I actually want to show. 
Um, and so much of that is withholding. I do a lot of withholding because that's hot to me. Like, yeah. it's like the equivalent of when a lot of femmes have trouble flirting with other femmes, for instance. Um, <laughs> if a femme imagines she has a crush on someone, she wants to see them at school, she anticipates seeing them at work, whatever, it's that that I want to capture. It's that like longing and desire and maybe or maybe not. Um, and I, I got a lot of that from watching movies and wanting to be able to capture and slow it down. So one of the movies that I watched as a kid was Basketball Diaries, um, which is about a real poet, uh, Jack Carroll. And uh, in it, Leonardo DiCaprio, a young Leo, is like masturbating to the view of the stars above him. And he can't explain it. It just turns him on. His whole body is awake and he's doing it, right? By himself. So cute. It's so cute. And I wanted to capture that in writing, like um, both images and in words. Um, and I still try to do that in, in some way. With comics, like you were saying, Lee, um, you know, you're building up anticipation. And with comics, you can concentrate that, that anticipation really quickly. So you can, do, you can show anticipation and actually um, incite it in a reader within a page. It's really easy to do. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I've definitely used that sculpting technique with my own comics before. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah there's uh, the, sen the sense of the gutters too, right? The space between the panels can be uh, this incredible uh, opportunity for the erotic imagination of the reader to sort of engage with what's in front of them, right? Uh, in a way that's not true with filmic porn, for example, where you're not encouraged to see what, to think about what happens between the cut of one, you know, uh, 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 within a film cut, but you're encouraged in comics to throw your own imagine, erotic imagination into the gutter. <laughs> oh, I literally didn't even realize I was saying that until I said it. That's what he said? <laughs> Into the gutter. Into their mind. <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, what should I, okay. Take your time. Yeah, there we go. Um, uh, actually, I do want to uh, open it up for, for the audience as well. So if anyone has a question here. I yes. just want to point out one thing yeah, that yeah. you were with your student in Trinidad was one of my first students when I, I worked at uh, CCA. Oh my God. I just want to say too, Mari said that, sh that she's a prude. I, we literally had a moment in school where we had to be like, Mari, Mari, <laughs> at the, in, in class, like, don't share all of that. You're not a prude. Oh my God, I don't remember that at all. <laughs> Hero, one of my heroes. We can contain multitudes. <laughs> we are multifaceted people. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yes. I'll, I'll give you a mic. So uh, this has been touched on a little bit with the discussion of including people from um, di with different body types, but um, you know, everything is always politicized, and sex is politicized in all sorts of ways. And I wonder if there's any... How I would like to hear people uh, discuss maybe if if they have any conflict ever about. Um, well, I, you know, I want to be true to my personal tastes or predilections, or at least w what I want to portray. And well, this really isn't a very positive image, and and these kinds of images got, get presented a lot in mainstream media in very negative ways. And do I want to contribute to that or not? And yeah. And I'm a creator too, and I struggle with this, yeah. like with every issue. So yeah, actually, I think I'd like it, to hear as people's long, thoughts. As long as you're, well, you're respectful, of course, but as long as you're playful with it, mm -hmm. it, yeah. it solves a lot of your problems. So it, you can touch on things without the ick factor. You know, as long as you're being just a little bit more playful and fun, that, that, that's what I find. <laughs> uh, Very I, playful. So like, it, it stumps, stump sex. I mean, you have to make it cute. Part. <laughs> yeah. uh, but this, by the way, is uh, from Hard to Swallow, and this was actually a true story about a... a f <laughs> Batman is not real, people. Uh, neither is Robin, but uh, some friends of mine were hired to be uh, uh, to dress up as Batman and Robin and break into this guy's house who was dressed as Evil Bear Man. <laughs> And evil bear man sprayed them with his evil bear musk, and then they had to fuck each other in front of him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, and so I had to draw that. I mean, it was my contra contractually obligated to draw this. And but uh, but I, it does sort of bring up the con this uh, what uh, to what John was saying about a playfulness, right? Like, so can humor be part of comic of erotic comics? And I feel like maybe humor is easier in erotic comics than in erotic film. Why is that? 
gosh, because people are snobs, and when they watch erotic film, they're like, I need to see cinema. You know, like, they're like, <laughs> cinema. But really, you don't really want that when you want to read an erotic book. You want to be turned on, and you want to be fascinated and titillated, and I think a lot of cinema is too fast for that. I, you ever seen, like, a porn actor in the director's office? They, they want to do a little story, and it, every time, like, you know, they get the you know du Turkish dude, and you know he's really hot and he's ready to go. And as soon as they're like, okay, action, and he's you know go up and say, and cruise him or talk to ask him his question, and he, all he is is like, all right, let's go. you know he just immediately goes into sex mode, so he can't act. <laughs> and I find also I can see like sometimes I'll see it in a cartoonist where they they're halfway through the story and their drawing abilities are going downhill. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Another question. You had one here. Yes. Oh, 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 oh sorry. Oh, okay. I've so been wanting to hear people have the is Yaoi good or okay conversation for so long. Um, in your opinions, like which ones are better and which ones are worse? Like, <laughs> that's a really interesting question. Like, just which which uh, country? has better porn? There's a lot of like, you know, like Crepix mm. um, and you know, there's Hugo Pratt doesn't do a lot of sex, but when he does it, it it's, it's very romantic. Mm. But yeah, the, the European comics always have like a lot of full frontal, but then they don't take it very far from after that. It's really subjective. Mm. Yeah. Like, I, I, when I was very, very little, I, I found um, a bunch of Tijuana Bibles, mm. <laughs> which I, I just I thought they were funny. T Tijuana Bibles would be, uh, are sort of, they were horizontal little pamphlets that like were... Track, uh, like chick, chick tracks, except sexy. They were sexy, and they were really popular in the beginning of the 1900s, and through the, Depre the Depression era. Um, and often they were um, unlicensed, licensable products, like um, the ones that I remember best are... Popeye, um, who would eat spinach, and then his penis would grow to like 50 times his size, and then he would do that. They're not very consensual. <laughs> I'll just put it that way. But but, but I, th I think maybe there, your question is more specifically about Yaoi and about about and I don't I don't know enough about the form uh, the the genre to be able to give specific um, names or anything. I don't know if anyone else is. But um, but I just would say in terms as a gay man. Uh, seeing some occasionally, I mean, I understand to John's point that they're not made for me, right? Um, but then it's sometimes a little weird to see yourself so completely um, uh, fetishized. Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> women know, know this every day of their lives, right? But like uh, to see oneself completely fetishized to the point where, you know, the, the author didn't give a shit about like what actually happens between two men. Um, and it's a little, I, you know, I guess I'm okay with that, but it's also a little weird. I don't want to have to read it. I don't know. I don't, I've, I'm conflicted about it. It makes me think about, like, Woman's Night at the, this, uh, what was it? I don't know if it's still there. It was a club. It was like a, it was sort of a sex kink club. And I, like me and my friend decided to go there and they'd have women's night. And we walked in. There's, first of all, there's no one there. And second of all, like all the walls like had videos of like just the worst straight porn depicting women. And like, you know, I wanted to meet a woman. I didn't want to see these, these horrible images. I mean, I don't know, maybe some people like it, but like me and my friend, who was a lesbian, we're just like not looking at the walls until then th there was nothing else to look at. So we're just like staring at him going, oh my God, I never want to have sex again. <laughs> Hi, yes. Um, my question is kind of building off of that, but I'd like to know for each one of you, where are you finding joy in queer erotic comics these days? Or what are the queer erotic comics that like, when you're like, I can't draw for shit, you read them and you're like, you know what? I, this could be good or bad, actually. But you're like, you know what? If this person can do it, maybe I can find something <laughs> in myself to put it forward. Smut Peller is sometimes where I turn to, right? I love that work. But where are you all finding joy? Where are you finding inspiration in like creating erotica and erotic comics? Like when I did Telony and I was adapting a novel, 
so there was straight sex in it too. So I had to draw the straight sex as well, but I wasn't really into it. So what I would do is I put this big white scary poodle that would appear every time, like dancing on his hind legs, <laughs> every time that, <laughs> uh -huh. and that's where I found a lot of joy. <laughs> That is some very weird advice. <laughs> I, don't, I don't particularly find inspiration outwardly usually, but like I love reading comics. Um, there, there's a, at some zine fest, I got this, I, I bought like a big bag of tiny comics, or maybe I found them online, but they're, I mean, I guess they kind of remind me of uh, Tijuana Bibles and that they're so small, but they're these like indie, it's just like, Funny little sex stories. I don't know. Those are my favorite. It was funny little sex stories. Nice. So before I discovered Smut Peddler and actual good erotic com comics, I would just like go on Google Images and be like erotic comics to see what I could find, to see if I could Ooh. find something. Oh, they're all terrible. Um, <laughs> they're all poorly drawn and it's just a lot of, it's like if you could imagine shitty porn in comic format. <laughs> and I look, I think back to that now and I'm just, this is horrible advice. Don't, don't do this, but I'm like, if you ever need to pick me up, just look at, just search up erotic comics on Google Images and you'll be like, oh, this is terrible. I'm doing fine. Uh. <laughs> and also I want to, you know, it, it inspired me to want to create erotic comics that actually depict intimacy and not just sex for the sake of sex. Like to humble myself, obviously everyone is into whatever they're into and comics are, you know, subjective and all of that. Hate but. reads are important. I, Look. Oh my God. <laughs> I get more inspiration from hate reads than reading something that is far beyond my capabilities. Yes. Oh my gosh. The amount of times I've been like, oh my God, I could draw this so much better. So much better. <laughs> <laughs> Starts thumbnailing immediately. You know, I once got hired to do this strip for but Bunkhouse Magazine it was one of the bear, magazines. and uh, I was, it was cowboy sex, and I was like, mm, I don't know, it wasn't uh, connecting with me. So what I did was I went into the back, they have the, the, the want ads. It's like paper, then you have a little, it's like before the internet. We, we know what want ads are, it's okay. <laughs> Thank you though. I took, I wrote, I said, I'm gonna put every single thing that they're asking for, I'm putting it in the, in the, in the comic, mm -hmm. and one guy, says, I want a dick that's the size of a 64 ounce can of pork and beans. Oh. I'm like, so I had to go to the store and look at the can. <laughs> it's almost square. Oh, and I drew it. Research. I love and it. And sales went up. It's a <laughs> I, I would also say if you do have a comic book store in your neighborhood that happens to have a really cool back section, Go to that back section. Yeah. Um, as a woman or uh, anyone else who maybe isn't a, a you know a cis man, it, it might feel uncomfortable going there at the first. At first, I found the one woman who works in my comic book store, and I said, "I'd like to go in the back, and I want to find something." And she's like, "Girl, I've been waiting for someone to take me back," <laughs> you know, because she wanted other people to know what was back then. They needed to sell things. Um, so she had stuff in there from like 1980 something, because so many people are afraid to physically go and do that. They'd rather go in online or, um, you know, I don't know, get it at a zine fest or something. But here um, at the store, you can. Peruse. You can look at things from Japan or Spain or wherever, and you might have shame, and you might not. It might be actually really joyful for you. I actually feel joy when I go there. <laughs> Silver Sprocket has an amazing yes. smutty yes. section. Amazing. Yeah. Um, I would also just to, to, you mentioned Jiraiya and Gengar Otagame, huge inspiration uh, for me. It, uh, the first uh, place I really saw that you could, how far you could push the um, uh, erotic comics and what they, not only the sort of fantastical nature of drawing centaurs and giants and stuff like that, but fantastical nature in terms of uh, showing realistic sex, but with fantastical viewpoints. So for example, uh, he would show uh, a, you know, a cock ejaculating inside of an ass, right? You can't do that with film without invasive surgical procedures um, <laughs> and uh, or, or you know he would show a guy getting fucked but with you know the top uh, removed so you get the full shot of the bottom um, in the throes of ecstasy in a way that would be impossible in film because you unless you turn the top invisible right um, so that was kind of cool to see I'm getting inspired to do shrinky dink porn 
right now. What, what shrinky? I've been playing with shrinky dinks. I just made a piece of art for a giant robot. I think you have to explain to some people what shrinky dinks are. Everyone knows what shrink. Who doesn't know what no. shrinky dinks are? Oh, what really? What okay, they're, they're plastics um, that you draw on, and then they shrink and get really like condensed and, and hard. Um, and yeah, I, I, oh, this could be very interesting. You can bake them too. Yeah, well, you have to bake them for two minutes. It's really easy and super fun. Like you, kids play with it. <clears throat> okay, moving on. <laughs> I think I think we've got time for yeah. It's, uh, the last question here. The one, one more question. So, totally gonna make this. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is for the entire, entire panel, uh, and it comes from something that Mari said earlier. Um, in terms of your practices, uh, is there any concepts that uh, you as artists find difficult to either um, make or that you uh, are challenged by within your own work? Uh, eroticism is beautiful, but there are challenging aspects to it, and I'm curious as to uh, what some of those may be for all of you. So, like, challenges? Uh, like, concepts within sex uh, that are oh. challenging for you folks. Okay, so I was, th I was thinking just art-wise, but you're talking about a, a sexual act or something or feeling that you would have during sex and how to express that. Because artistically, I always had trouble with ropey strands of saliva and um, mm. cum. Like, you can learn a lot from an artist by the way they do their cum shots. Yeah, okay. I felt like that, <laughs> that image that we just saw of yours had a lot of ropey strands where you really like, get, that was a beautiful image by the way. Yeah, that was because Canada would, would burn our books every time we, the customs officials would seize your books and burn them if there was any connection between like fluids connecting bodies. Oh. So I, now I do it every chance I get. I'll do like, you know. But a workaround, that's amazing. It looks so good. Some, sometimes our limitations are what really pushes us to do like more interesting things. I, I, that is something about just art in general that I love. It, it's the ropey strand haiku effect. <laughs> <laughs> or, or if they're just, uh, you don't want to show full frontal, but you want to show nudity. Mm. So there's the shadows and there's always vase in the way or something, you know what I mean? But that makes for a more interesting composition, potentially. Yeah, yeah. Well, when I was drawing Kiss and Tell, which was my book about when I was having sex as a child, like, I didn't want to draw, you know, what could be considered child pornography, so, like, I had to really kind of work around that. I mean, I was, wasn't a little kid, but, I, like, I don't know. It, was, it wasn't, like, Phoebe Gleckner style, but it was, um, you know, stuff happened. So it's it's an it's an amazing book. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, I think for me, especially with the thesis I'm working on right now, one of the things that I want to consider is navigating conversations about consent, because that can be very tricky. Because, like, at, at least in my opinion, consent is a lot more than getting a verbal yes or a verbal no, because there are grays that happen. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you might be doing an activity that you consented to, but then you find out, oh, I wasn't actually OK with that. How do you hold those conversations? How do you hold conversations when mistakes happen, especially when you are depicting more kinky scenes, or if you are engaged in more uh, kink-related activity or just higher risk sexual activity. So navigating those conversations for, for me, I would say, would be my biggest challenge, or not challenge, but something that I'm trying to be mindful of is like, okay, how can we participate in healthy conversations of what consent can and probably should look like? But, but then sometimes the erotic, I, I mean, your erotic creative content doesn't necessarily have to align with what your your real practice, sexual practice would be, oh, right? Yeah. I mean, we can have fantasies of, you know, rape fantasies and not believe in rape, right? So um, uh, it's something I think about a lot, again, in terms of the work of Gengar Tagame, for example, and uh, all of his work is, a, is about lack of consent. I mean, that's uh, clearly he finds that erotic. And I asked him at one point what his most challenging work was, and it was when he had to, for primarily for a, a Western audience, he created this story for this anthology, and it was um, uh, it involved cons entirely consent sex. Huh. 
And he had never done that before. It became this sort of like, huh. you know, challenge for him, which is really fascinating. I will say with my own work in Hard to Swallow, there's one pirate story that sort of started off campy and got darker and darker and darker and rapier. And uh, it freaked me out as I was, as I was doing it. Um, but I knew I needed to finish it uh, to, to carry it through to see what happened to those characters and how things turned and it did turn around, but I needed to go through some really dark places and that has to be okay also for creators, right? We can't just do stuff that's okay, uh, kind of uh, safe territory. I find um, one of the hardest things for me to do is explain my art sometimes after I've made it. Like, I, like when I'm making it, I'm just making what I feel like making. I don't actually put a lot of thought into it as I'm drawing, like beyond like what the story is or whatever. So like when I was doing this dirty produce stuff, I mean, there, like my publisher was asking me questions because I'm, I'm like, okay, well this is all consensual fruit and vegetable porn. <laughs> and they're like, uh, they're, I, I see someone up there is doing this. You know, when, if, when you're being paid for it, do, do you feel like a sex worker? <laughs> Sometimes you actually get sex worker problems. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had to explain like how certain things were consensual. Like if someone seemed unhappy, I'm like, well, maybe, you know, just because it's consented doesn't mean they're happy. I don't know. <laughs> this this Our, pea in a pod is, it like, it does not necessarily want to be left out of this threesome, but... <laughs> They consented to be there. <laughs> okay, this is a very odd way to end this <laughs> panel, but uh, let's just end it by saying uh, everybody go out and make awesome porn, please. Like, make the world a better place of porn. So thank you so much uh, for being here. And let's give it up for the panelists. Incredible. So, thank you. I brought a small handful of... Um, of Dirty, uh, well, dirty produce um, stickers. Um, probably not enough for everybody, but I'll, for the, whoever comes up to me first, I'll, I'll give them out. I think I bought like 10 or 15. Um, oh, oh, um, they're, they're, it's a garlic and an onion making out sexily. <laughs> See me afterwards. <laughs> I sent you one, actually. Thank you. you did not get my